Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Joan Chow. I'm the Associate Director of Technology Access at DSS Disability Support Services. Our office is part of the Office for Diversity, Equity, and Community Engagement. It's my pleasure to be here today to give you a brief introduction of our missions, the service we provided, and some resources on study abroad with disabilities. Let me know anytime uh, if you have any questions. Disability Support Service was established in 1978. We work collaboratively with students, faculty, and staff across the campus to foster a climate of universal academic excellence. We also promote disability culture and GDAP's broader diversity and inclusion initiatives. We aim to create an inclusive environment that challenges the notions of normality and that influences scholarship across all disciplines. Disability as an aspect of diversity. This is a very important core value for our service. Disabled people live at intersection of all systems of operation and social justice issues. There isn't one issue or one intersection where you will not find disabled individuals advocating for or experiencing the effects of those issues. Recently, uh, we start a discussion in our staff meeting and we study the literature, which let us talk about more uh, experience regarding the operation and social justice issues for people with disabilities. I think it's, it is very important for our staff members to understand the complexity of the disability identity and be able to provide our service with understanding and appreciation. So now let's dig into the relevant laws that support our work. The first one is section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, which was established on 1973. So section 504 prohibits the agencies who receive federal fundings the discrimination against people with disabilities in their employment, in their programs or activities provided. The next one probably uh, most of you are familiar with it. It's the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, which was passed in 1990. So this is a remarkable movement to ensure that people with disabilities have the same opportunities and right as anyone else does. And in 2009, the, amend, the amendment of ADA was established, which is known as ADAA. So this one further ensures people with disabilities the right to have the same opportunity to work in schools or in different uh, workplace or settings. The third one uh, is the Title II, Title III, which was aligned with Title I of the ADA in 2016. They are all about employment regulations to ensure that people with disabilities, they are not discriminated against any job opportunities. We also follow DC Human Rights Act, and this law applies to every anyone who work, live, or visit DC. So this law protects people with disabilities with the right to have the equal access of their accommodations in their work or study. The next one is Fair Housing Act. It prohibits the discrimination against people with disabilities in any housing or housing related transactions. So let's talk about definition of disability. As we think about the definition, 
many of us might just think about the visible disabilities. However, there are so many different categories of disability. So according to ADS definition, disability is a physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more major life activities. The life activities here uh, we list them for your reference, including performing manual tasks, seeing, hearing, eating, sleeping, walking, standing, lifting, bending, speaking, breathing, learning, reading, concentrating, thinking, communicating, and working. Those include people who have a record of such an impairment, even if they do not currently have a disability. For example, uh, if someone has a diagnosis before, but doesn't see him or herself needing a, an accommodation and decline to receive any accommodations, they are still considered people with a disability because they had a record and also they had a diagnosis before. It also includes individuals who do not have a disability, but as but are regarded as having a disability. For someone uh, probably who has cancer before, but now is in remission, they are still considered the people with disability. So now let's get into the part of DSS work. I'm very excited to share our service with you because we are service provider, we face students, we communicate with students, and it's our job to help you and to make sure that you have the best opportunity to succeed at GW. So to start with working, I mean, to start working with DSS, I would suggest you to check our website. First of all, you want to make sure you have the required document. So. Do remember to check out our documentation guidelines in our website. And we work with you after we receive your registration, where you sign up electronically, you will also include a document for our review. The process for approving accommodation requests. So after we receive your registration form, we will read this form carefully, try to understand what you are looking for, try to understand what accommodations you are seeking. And also we will prepare uh, the discussion with you by reading the documentation first. Then one of our DSS associates will reach out to you to set up an interview. So we start disability analysis by referencing to the documentation. We also work talk with you, take notes, and want to know more about your experience. So the whole process of disability analysis is quite collaborative and interactive. And if needed, we also talk to the provider. So it's very important to know that uh, you follow the documentation guideline and you have a good communication with your provider about what information to provide to DSS in order to have a smoother process of the review. After we gather all information needed, and we will finalize your accommodations and send you an eligibility letter from our system. And from that letter, you will get an instruction to request letters to professors. This is a formal communication between DSS student and the faculty. And at college level, we encourage students to self-advocate. That's why we request students to send these letters to professors. It serves as a communication opportunity. And also, if you need to communicate with your professors and let them understand your need, this is a good opportunity. However, on this later, we won't disclose the disability information. We will just list accommodations we will approve for and the guidelines to support the accommodations. 
We also review housing accommodations, which I won't go into detail today because we are focused on academic classroom accommodation more today. So for housing accommodations, we follow the same documentation guideline. We also have additional guidelines listed on the website. Basically, we look for information from the provider that's adequate for our evaluation. Overall, I want to uh, let you know that DSS accommodation review is very uh, personalized and we treat each review as an individual case. There's no definite answer to say, oh, what accommodation would be good for this category of disability? No, we don't do that way. We look at each of you with your request and history and your need. So to come up with a list of accommodations appropriate for you. We are required to provide reasonable accommodations. We should not over accommodate or under accommodate. So the turnaround time for the review will be about 10 business days if we have everything ready. Sometimes it takes longer because uh, we do meet the challenge of scheduling discussion with the provider in their busy schedules. And we want to ensure you it's confidential. We won't reveal your disability to anyone else. And it's non-retroactive. What does that mean? That means the accommodation is going to be provided at the moment when you are approved and when you send all the letters to the professors. The professors, they are not responsible for providing accommodation before knowing the accommodation approved by the DSS. So it is very important for students to send out these letters to professors as soon as possible, especially in the beginning of the semester or whenever you get your eligibility later, you start the requesting process. It takes 24 to 48 hours to get a PDF version of this letter in your email box. So if we have the letters to professor ready now, that means the accommodation are going to start now. It cannot be traced back to provide you accommodation for what happened two weeks before. So please uh, remember, uh, it's our responsibility to guide you through the process, but it's also student responsibility to make sure of the timeline is followed very well. So I know most of students, when they come to GW from the high school, and they kind of ask us the question, what do I need to do? Is your office going to inform the professors about my accommodations? The answer is no. DSS will not inform your professors. We encourage you to self-advocate for your need, but we will work with you. We will support you. In the process, if you have any issues or any challenges that comes up, you are always welcome to contact DSS. So the academic, academic accommodation we provide are based on different uh, needs. For example, uh, for people with visual disability or special learning disorder, we provide auto test materials. We produce the material in PDF format for them to be able to use the screen reader to access the materials. We provide ASL, American Sign Language. We offer interpreter in the class for deaf or hard and hearing students. We also offer CART, CART stands for uh, real-time communication, and we provide the captioner. Right now, since the pandemic, we have difficulty of locating CART provider which will come to a class on site, but most CART services are done remotely, but it still function the same as the in on site service. We also provide closed captioning for 
students who need this service and it covers uh, materials in the classroom or in the online learning environment. We also provide note taking service in different levels. We have professional note taker if needed. We also have the note taking software, which proved to be kind of useful and students really love it, uh, be able to access this note whenever they are ready. We provide screen reader software to students. Right now, it is Kurzweil. We do have enough license to provide each member a GW a license for using Kurzweil. And if you are interested and want to learn more about it, you can contact DSS. We also have two technology rooms in Delman. So the technology rooms are housed with hardware, equipment, and some software to support your learning, but it need to be approved as one of the accommodations. We have other technologies available, like Roger, hearing device, or Eva. Eva is the software or app you use for instant captioning. We also provide testing accommodations as part of our accommodation review. And most of the time we encourage students who has the testing accommodations to take the exam with their peers. However, we understand the challenge from scheduling or location need. So we offer testing proctoring service. More details are available on our website, but I just want to remind uh, students for testing proctoring service need, please submit the request seven days prior to the exam date. That will help us to provide a needed service. We also provide other disability specific accommodations to support chronic health need or temporary physical disability challenge. For example, if a student is injured and we have the doctor's note to support this temporary disability, one of the accommodation I can think of is the transportation support. So we do review case by case and provide it reasonable accommodation when come, they are sending to us. So I'm very excited to learn about the study abroad program with the School of International Affairs. I think it's so wonderful for you guys to be able to experience and really to test what you have learned in your classroom. So I just want to provide some general resources here and for the coordination and also for any questions, please contact study of our program in Elias School of Business. So let's get into uh, this introduction. To study abroad with disabilities, I think it's very important to get started early. We recommend you start to do the research at least six months before the program. For example, do some research on available programs in different countries and see what best fit you need and goals. We also want to encourage you to recognize the accommodation planning takes extra preparation time. It is very true, especially I can provide more details regarding preparation time as a service provider. We do need enough turnaround time to provide the needed service. And I also think that would be the case everywhere. So if you need accommodations, including the following, sign language, captioning, conversion of print to audio or braille, mobility considerations, including but not limited transportation and housing, please give extra time in planning because for the host country or institution, they might need to find a service provider far in advance. They might need to locate the resources they need in order to provide it, to provide the accommodation. 
And the third thing we want to talk about the budget. It's very important for you to know what will be needed, especially if you need personal care attendant, if you need specialized equipment, if you need adaptive technology or medication or other healthcare costs. Those are the considerations very important for you in this process. So to sum up, timing, planning, and budget, they are also so important in this process. We want to offer you some questions to consider when doing your planning. Number one, what accommodation do I currently receive at GW? And will I need or want all of them when I am abroad? Am I going to be okay if only some of my accommodations are met? So we just want to uh, bring to your attention, not every country, they have the same accommodation or they have the same perspective toward disability. So I think it's a great opportunity for either student to experience different culture and even from the perspective as a student with disability, what kind of experience will you have? Are you going to be comfortable? And if not, what are the challenges we can think ahead? So the second question is kind of relevant. How was my disability perceived in the countries that most interest me? What terminology might be used when talking about disability in that country? So if you are going to a country using a different language, would you able to name the disability or to communicate using the language in the host country? And if not, what are the resources or the preparation you need to do in advance in able to enable you to communicate? How do I feel if my accommodation cannot be met in my desired country? Am I willing to consider other location that may be a better fit? So in your process, if you have done your research and you realize not all the accommodation you need will be fulfilled, will you be able to consider a different location, different country? Number four, can I legally bring in my vindication to last through the entire experience? This is very important. And you may need to do research or communicate with your provider about your need on the medication and also check the regulation from the host country. Do I currently work with a care care provider or have ongoing regular appointments and will I be able to do so while on my program? We have students who regularly meet with their care provider. So think about it. Do you still need to meet with your current provider when you are in your host country? If that's recommended, when, what can be done? Is it going to be something to be scheduled in advance or you know, something that's planned as a need base? So uh, communication with your provider is very important as well. Let them know that you are going abroad and see their suggestions. So, how will my experience navigating my disability in the US help me adjust to my host country? I think this is a very interesting question and also very rewarding one to think about. You know, we all try to learn, try to broad, broaden our horizon. So study abroad is really nice. And with disability, maybe you even have a challenger experience compared to other students, however, we just want to encourage you to keep looking for options in your research process and also be open minded about the possibilities and be well prepared to communicate about your disability. Sorry. Moving to the next slide.
Next slide is about frequent athlete questions. So um, at least the three questions, I think they are very fundamental and good for our discussion here. The first question, should I disclose my disability when I apply for a study abroad program? Disability information is considered part of your academic record and it's protected by FERPA. So we encourage you, when you start the process, you can update your FERPA agreement to include disability, uh, to include study abroad officer who are going to be working with you in this process because they do need to know to learn about your disability and communicate with the host country about your need. So it is appropriate to update your FERPA agreement to include study abroad officer in this document. Second question, what do I do if I am denied access to academic accommodation for my disability once I arrive at my host institution? We hope this won't happen because we will encourage you to try to ensure that all accommod academic accommodations were approved or communicated before your departure. So if this happens, we encourage you to keep all documentation in written and call or email your study abroad officer to let them know what happened and start the communication with the host institution. We cannot guarantee things will be solved in a satisfying way as you wish, but we do want to encourage you to keep the communication in email, to keep the documentation well enough for GW to assist you. A third question, what if I decide not to use accommodations abroad? To use the accommodations, it's totally up to you. However, we want to let you know, if not using the accommodation bring safety concern to the institution, I mean, to the whole institution or to the group who will be studying with you, you might, need, you might need to rethink about joining the program or, you know, I think uh, the whole institution and study a board office will communicate with you. Another thing to think about is that if you decline to use the academic accommodation, then you just stay there and continue the study process. And it turns out your academic performance was not so well. The grade won't change because of the fact you didn't use accommodation. So uh, do think about declining from using the accommodation about potential consequence. So accommodations are used to support you. We just want to encourage you uh, to have good planning and understanding of your need and the resources available. There are other additional resources which I think might be helpful. For example, the Google Maps, wheelchair accessible roads. Google now, they have this uh, cap capability to map wheelchair accessible roads for you. So please check it out. The second one is the most well-known resource, Mobility International USA. So it's for Americans going abroad and how to plan and prepare for their disability need. US Department of State also have the website which covers travelers with disabilities to help you research and prepare. So those are the three uh, resources I identified. However, there are other resources available as well. So for example, I believe each country have their own website about their disability support or the host institution will have those information as well. So be sure to check out the resources, the information available for you. Any questions? Question. So um, when a student 
join the program? Um, do they have to join each year or is it until they graduate or when does when are they done with the program? You mean for DSS accommodation uh -huh. review? Yes. So uh usually it's just once. once. Like okay, when you enter the program or any at any point in your study you have a diagnosis and you realize you need accommodation yes. you submit your request mm -hmm. for us to review and that make you uh, eligible for dss service during your tenure at gw however you are also welcome to submit additional request anytime we just want to remind students uh, the interview process with us might happen one time. But whenever we receive your additional accommodation request, we will interview you again. Yeah, one thing very important to remember is that the interview or the review process with DSS is one time or need based. But the students do need to remember requesting letters to professors every semester. Because it's important for students to communicate and they will have different in instructors every semester. Mm -hmm. So we ask students to provide up to date letters to professors every semester. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Okay. So if we don't have questions, it's okay. And you are always welcome to contact DSS whenever you think you have questions or you need support for us to review your need and to help you out. And thank you for coming to this presentation. And I hope I give adequate information for your reference. And thanks again. And thank you so much for your participation. It was an excellent speech. We were so appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I hope I didn't speak too fast. <laughs> no,